Hi everybody, so today we're going to be looking at some editing basics. This is good practice for um, any form of editing that you're doing, whether it's college work or external work, um, and this really will help speed up um, your editing workflow later on and also help you with future troubleshooting and things like that. So for today's project, I'm going to be um, using the On The Right Track work that the students created earlier this year to, um, to kind of talk through good file management that will help when it comes to your editing. So the first thing you should always do once you've captured your media is organize it into folders like you see here. And when you do that, you'll see, you know, obviously you've got your person's name and then you'll have your movie clips. Once you've started with good house management like this, it's really good practice to keep on top of it. So this is clear to anybody that's looking at this project that these interviewees, Malcolm, David and Barry, can be located here. I'm going to ignore this folder for now because, excuse the boat going past if you just heard that. Uh, horn sounding. Um, ignore the three interviews folder. Within there are three more interviews structured similar to this. They're separate um, for a specific reason. So, um, so today we're going to be looking at this sort of workflow. So when I click on this chap here, you'll see that the footage that you can see there is from, captured from two different cameras um, and this is the terminology that comes straight out of the camera. It's not very helpful, doesn't really tell us anything. Now this is a folder where I followed some good practice of renaming and however you rename your footage can be completely personal to you but try to keep it to a formula which if you were to pass this on to somebody else it would be simple to understand. So I have the person's initials, underscore A for A roll and one for scene. So this is A roll scene one. So I know that these two clips should be the master, she uh, master shots on my sequence. And these two clips, initials underscore B scene one and B scene two stand for B roll. So this is gonna be close ups. It's possibly gonna have poorer audio quality. Um, and there's a re that, that's the clear reason why I label it like this. Now this is good for interviews. If this was a short film, I'd probably structure it slightly different and stick to scene one, take one. So it could be SC1 underscore T1, T2, T3, depending on how many takes each scene one has. Um, and I would structure it more so like that. I could probably go one step further and organize folders if there are scenes with multiple takes just so that in one folder are all my scene ones and I could navigate around a little bit quicker like that. So to demonstrate, I'm gonna follow this practice in with uh, Malcolm as well. So I know from the day that was filmed that the master shot was filmed by this camera. So I'm not gonna re-watch the footage, but what you should probably do if you're not uh, confident with the cameras that you've used is watch the footage and determine what is A roll and B roll before you start um, logging your footage like this. So I'm going to change this to MT underscore A1 and MT underscore A2. B2, should I say? B1. There's my mind. So MT for the person's initials underscore B1. And um, and that's it for housekeeping. Now, in a second, I'm going to show you how, why this translates really well. So we're going to open up Premiere Pro, and I've just got these folders already here. And as you can see, I'm going to open up Kevin. Now, Premiere Pro shows your footage like so, which is quite helpful. And this is sometimes the reason why a lot of people leave this process out. However, if you're looking at the footage like this, which is something I prefer to do, because I like to go one step further when it comes to editing like this on my timeline, I prefer to see, um, I, I'm quite visual, so I like to see some colors on my timeline. So what I try to do is I label um, my A roll in yellow and usually my B roll, so I can multiple select by holding shift and I'm going to label my B roll green. So when it comes to editing, my main timeline should be yellow and then above my main timeline will be the small snippets of B-roll which will be green and should show up visually as green. The same can be done for your, for your bins. So for example, my bins that are here, 
if, if say for example there's multiple people working on this project if I was going to edit these two people again I would label them and this is something you'd have to talk to in your team but I'm going to label the ones I'm going to edit in the lavender and the ones somebody else is going to edit I'm going to label these in forest now you'll notice at the moment because of the way Premiere Pro is looking, the viewer we're looking at right now, these don't look like they've changed colour. If we change this to this view, you can now see our interviews have got different colours. And the two that I'm going to be interviewing are these lavender colours. And the two that the other person's interview uh, editing are these green colours. So for me, colour coding is a must and it's something that I really like to, uh, really like to follow. Um, and you'll notice as well when you drag this onto a timeline, the timeline turns this colour and similarly for your B-roll that colour. So again, just helps me navigate. So visually when I'm looking at my timeline, when it gets nice and large with lots of footage, I know where my A-roll clips are and I know where my B-roll clips are. And if there's a glitch in the B-roll, I can quickly just skip through the B-roll without getting confused about where that is. If that's you, then I definitely recommend doing this. The next thing to do as I'm on this project here is rename your sequences. So again, when we create a sequence by dragging and dropping into the sequence area, you'll notice that whatever clip I've used, it creates the sequence based on that clip's name. And again, this isn't good practice because looking at it like this, it could be clear that this is the sequence, but at the same time, if we had that exact same clip that I used in here, it will look like the exact same clips duplicated. The icon does change, so looking at the icons is one way to visually um, see if that's the case. Um, and if you're going into the grid view like this, into the small icon view like this, you'll also notice that the sequence is a def definitely a different logo. But again, following good practice or practice I like to follow, I'm going to rename this Rough Cut purely because then I know that this is the rough cut sequence and I'm going to go one step further because there is multiple interviewees I'm going to put the person's name underscore rough cut now again following good practice to keep all my sequences in one place so I'm exporting uh, all these interviews later on as separate ed and separate interview videos you could create a bin and call this sequences and then So when someone's looking at all the sequences, you know whose rough cut that is that you're looking at. And we can also see now this is named here. Now, this has taken me roughly five minutes to do, and it is something which I recommend you doing. It will save you a lot of time. There's nothing worse than having a scruffy um, project space where you're sifting through footage, trying to remember where the good footage is, where the bad footage is, uh, where your sequences are, where your music is. So try to follow these steps. It takes a little bit longer to begin with, but ultimately this is gonna save time later on. Hope you found this tutorial useful, and I'll see you in the next one.